Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 9 Ascension. In our last video, the Avatar learned about karma, rescued a boy from a burning barn, rescued said boy's mother from a band of brigands, led by a man named Tristan, and killed Tristan and took all of his loot. Pretty good haul for the Avatar, I would say. And now he's returned to Britain, where it is time to finally visit the museum, which is the very large uh, square-shaped building to the southeast of the flashing red pin. Let's head in that direction. Also, it is worth noting... Okay, that was odd. It is worth noting... If we take a look at the vitals here... Last time we checked this out, looking for information about karma, couldn't find any. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, mana is now 25. It was 22. Yes, uh, mana is a measure of your karma. So apparently if you're a really nice guy, you get more casting power. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me because someone like the Guardian... I mean, I haven't seen magic like that from anybody else in the entire Ultima. You know, I mean, maybe mundane, you know. But the Guardian is pretty darn good at what he does. And he's evil. So, it doesn't make sense. But what does, right? Just accept it. <laughs> but we'll, we'll keep an eye on the mana. Every time we hear any kind of indication that the Avatar's karma has increased, we'll, we'll take a look at that and see what's changed. Here is the museum. I have a little uh, codex symbol up there. Good day, sir. Hello. The Museum of Britannia. Yeah, they call it that, but uh, it's kind of more like the Museum of the Avatar. We have uh, all the box art in the lobby here. Sounds pretty crowded. There must be a real horde of people in there. Let's let's go see all our adoring fans, right? It is I, the Avatar. There are two people in here. Well, jokes aside, the atmospheric chatter can get a little loud and distracting at times. So in post-production, I will be editing, lowering the volume on those parts when it just gets completely out of hand. So, you're not going to get the full experience of Ultima 9 in that regard, but you're welcome. Well, let's, uh, let's talk to this, this fellow. Hello. Hi. Please don't bother me right now. Okay. Hi. Hi. Yes, now that is that is quite a work of art, and we'll uh, we'll be looking into that in a bit. Let's speak with this person now. Who are you? Do you need something? You know, she's looking at him. The, the tapestry is right behind, and the, the avatar is smack in the center of it. So, well, <laughs> I'm the avatar. <laughs> I am the avatar. You're the avatar. Oh my goodness, you are. Why, you look just like the tapestry. I can't believe that you're here. If you can't find the lost runes, no one can. Like, no hi, no thanks for saving the world so many times. Boy, I hope you find those runes. What is your name, my lady? Oh, I'm sorry. I am Alina, the museum curator. Oh, Avatar, do you think that you can find the lost runes? I truly think that you're our only hope. Man, she's really into those runes. Well, let's just, like, completely uh, deflate that balloon there. <laughs> oh, what's, um, what's a rune? Please, refresh my memory about the runes. You don't remember? Well, it has been a long time since you've been to Britannia. The runes are objects that embody the virtues and also act as keys to unlock the power of those virtues. I'm terribly afraid that the runes may be used against us. I love how everybody 
looks at him, raises an eyebrow, and is like, you don't remember this, like, plot essential stuff? Really? Oh, well, you've been gone for a while. I guess it's cool. No. I'd tell this guy to get out. It's like, you can't save Britannia. <laughs> Do you even know where you are? How could the runes be used against us? The runes are objects of good, positive power, Avatar. But there are two sides to everything. Good cannot exist without evil. What would happen to us if the runes were corrupted and made evil? Think of all the harm that such power could cause if devoted to evil. There's some foreshadowing there. Not just about the runes. Can you tell me more? Can you tell me more? No, that is all that I know. But the Shrine Keeper should be able to help you. Her name is Sarah, and she's a very spiritual person. She knows more about the Shrine than anyone else. You can usually find Sarah just outside the East Gate. You should go and see her. For someone so worried about the ruins, you don't... It's like, now, nah, go talk to, talk to Sarah. I don't know anything about these things. All right, well, what else is going on here? I need some information. Certainly. What can I help you with? Oh boy, she's uh, she's just full of information, isn't she? What's going wrong here in Britain? It's because of the mayor. He says that it's the compassionate thing to do, but I think that he's lost his mind. My own poor husband got sent away just because he was blind. Now I ask you, is that compassion? Well, maybe it's compassion for everybody else. That's that's what the mayor is saying, right? Um, this shouldn't be here, this, uh, dialogue option, so we'll come back to that in a moment. It, it, it's a non sequitur, this, this is out of order, because someone didn't check this stuff. Please, tell me what happened. Well, I don't really know what happened. All I know is that one day I came in and the runes had disappeared. Oh, now we're talking about the runes. <laughs> I thought we were talking about uh, Britain still, but okay. Uh, could you tell me about the runes again? I already forgot. Um, when did the... How do things turn up missing? Anybody ever think about that? Things don't turn up miss. If it turns up, you have found it. Right? I don't know. When did the runes turn up missing? Oh, it's been quite a long time. Right after the columns appeared some 20 years ago. Over the years, various people have tried to locate the runes, but so far, no one has. I know that you can, Avatar. Please find the runes and save us. It's been 20 years of this. 20 years of the columns and nobody's... <sighs> okay, that's, that's fine. Lord, Lord British still doesn't have a clue. <laughs> He's just been sitting around in Castle British, just chilling. I don't know what's going on. Those are big columns. Um, save you from what? Save you from what? All of the evil that has taken over Britain. Haven't you seen how mean everyone has become? The sick people are being sent away. Little children are being asked to tell on their parents. All sorts of things are happening. It's just horrible. There we go about the uh, children telling on their parents. Now it makes sense to ask about this. Children are telling on their parents? Yes. If their parents get sick, children are being asked to tell the authorities about them. Isn't that sad? Well, yeah, that's not great. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe that would be better for, for you, where honesty is the... Wait a minute, no, that's justice. Send them all to Moonglow. Send them all to Moonglow. Honesty. Um, well, we, we asked about what's wrong in Britain. We asked about what happened, which is referring to the runes. Let's see if we can get back to the uh, beginning of the dialogue tree. I need some information. Certainly. What can I help you with? All right, all right. Well, what do you know about the columns? What do you know about the columns? Well, none of these bad things were happening until the columns arrived. Do you think that they could somehow be causing the problems? No. They're just columns. What, why is everybody so hot to jump on these things? It's, they're just columns. What else is housed in the museum? Oh, many things. 
Our best display, aside from the rooms, is the Tapestry of Ages. You should go and look at it, Avatar. The Tapestry is a record of your exploits here in Britannia. It is most impressive. Yes, we will do that as soon as we are done speaking with her. Okay. Did we ask what she knows about the columns, or...? What do you know about the columns? Well, none okay. of these bad things... Do you think that they... Right, okay. Uh, let's see if there was more dialogue. I need some information. Certainly. What can I help you with? Uh, what have you got in the museum? Although I think... Did I just ask about that for the Tapestry of Eight? I think I did. We'll check, and then we're done. What have you got in the museum? Oh, there are many interesting pieces in the museum. Why don't you go and have a look around? You're so helpful. That was, uh... That was great, Alina. Thanks. Goodbye, Alina. Farewell. <coughs> also, yes, uh, that scribbling noise. The Avatar has been taking notes in his journal. I just haven't been keeping up with them. We'll catch up with that in a bit. Well, we have been advised to, uh... Excuse... Excuse me. We've been advised to take a look at the Tapestry of Ages, so we'll do that now. Here hangs the Tapestry of Ages. This magical work tells the story of the Avatar, from the Age of Darkness, through the Age of Virtue, and even foretells the future in the Age of Enlightenment. Yeah, it... it does, and it makes everybody in Britannia seem even more clueless. But, uh, we'll get there in a bit. This is a nice work of art. It really is. Um, I'd like to credit the artists here. I think that is Greg and Tim... Uh, Hildebrandt? Something of that nature? Oh, well, well done, Greg and Tim. Well done. And now... We will uh, press these buttons because it's a, it's interactive. It's kind of cool. And we're going to hear a familiar voice. So let's begin. The evil wizard Mundane defies Lord British and seizes control of Britannia, known at the time as Sosaria. Yeah, so somehow they got uh, Hawkwind to narrate the Tapestry of Ages. Um. Already we have a problem here, obviously, because uh, yeah, that that isn't really what happened. Uh, so Saria is like four times the size of Britannia. It, they're not the same thing. Britannia is this one little chunk of Sosaria. and Mundane kind of defied everybody, not just Lord British. There were there were like eight kings. Lord British was just one of them. So that's. Uh, there's a lot of anachronistic nonsense here, Just, and we'll point it out. We'll uh, we'll pick at it, and then we'll move on. Because what else can you do? <laughs> What's done is done. Mundane creates the gem of immortality to solidify his future as supreme evil overlord. That's about right. Yes. A traveler from another world travels back through time to destroy the gem and Mundane. Accurate. Yeah, I would say. Just for reference, I did not play... I jumped in at Ultima 6 and played everything after that. I didn't play anything that came before that. I believe I've watched Let's Plays for Ultima 1, 4, and 5. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know them as well. But I saw them. Mundane's lover, Minax, vows revenge upon the Traveler and Cesaria and rebuilds Mundane's evil empire. Uh, my understanding is that that is correct. Minax masters the ways of the Moon Gates and summons evil beasts to ravage the Traveler's world and people across time. Yeah, um, if I recall, in Ultima 2, Minax does uh, manipulate Earth's timeline. And some pretty weird stuff happens here. So... Again, the stranger saves his world and ours, defeating Minax in her legendary castle. All right. Exodus, the foul progeny of Mundane and Minax, 
begins the most wicked tyranny to befall our land. Yeah, Exodus is a, a hybrid demon and computer. He's kind of a cyborg. Very, very strange abomination. Very strange. Very smart, too, if, if I understand correctly. Exodus masters more evils than his forebears and ravages the land for the third time. This is a little strange, though, seeing... Because I believe... Well, hold on, we'll just look at this. For the third time, the Traveler returns and vanquishes the last of this evil triad. I don't know if that is just supposed to be some generic demon, or if that is supposed to be Exodus. Because it looks like it's there as well. Um, if that is indeed supposed to be Exodus, I don't think that's how it went. Uh... The Avatar killed Exodus by walking into a room with a mainframe. Yeah, like a mainframe, like a giant, giant computer, and put in four punch cards, basically, and it, it shut him down. <laughs> and that, that was the end of Exodus. Uh, <laughs> so that, there wouldn't have been any big climactic battle with a, an entity of that form to vanquish Exodus. I don't know. I don't know. Lord British unites Cesaria as Britannia and issues a proclamation seeking the champion of virtue. Uh, he didn't really unite Cesaria. <laughs> Ever heard of Serpent Isle? They didn't really care for him. And they are not Britannia, that's for sure. Um, he united what was left of Cesaria, which was just Britannia. And he didn't look like that yet, I can tell you that much. Uh, he, he still... He, he was not silver yet. So that's strange looking. The Traveler returns and sets forth through Britannia to gain insight and prove himself in the ways of virtue. That is correct. I have no qualm with that one. The Traveler is proclaimed the Avatar for his own purity and for showing our people the path of virtue. Yeah. Again, though, Lord British should not have a white beard yet. Afflicted by the evil Shadow Lords, Lord British's trusted regent Blackthorn declares martial law. Yeah, feel bad for him. He got manipulated. The Avatar and his eight companions struggle against the tyranny of Blackthorn's Inquisition. Yeah, and so here we have... Uh, we have the Avatar. There's Yolo. That is uh, Mariah. Shamino. Julia. Joffrey. Uh, Janna, or Jaina? I think it's Janna. Dupre. And Katrina. The Avatar did have quite an entourage there. Lord British is saved and Blackthorn is banished to the ethereal plane for his crimes. I'm not sure it was ever specified that that's where Blackthorn was sent. I mean, Lord British just kind of opened a, a red moon gate and said, get in there. But I guess now we know. The Avatar is brought to Britannia by gargoyles bent upon his destruction. Accurate. Um, what's not entirely accurate is that this is made to look like they're in a building and that uh, someone has just stepped through a doorway. I, also, I'm pretty darn sure... I mean, you can see the, uh, the arrow sticking through the gargoyle's head there because, yes, that did happen. Uh, Gargoyle was just about to sacrifice the Avatar with a ceremonial dagger of some sort, and you hear the clack of a crossbow and a, a bolt straight through the uh, Gargoyle's head. But it was out in, like, pale moonlight. They were not in a building, and it was a crossbow, so I'm not sure what this is. Again, not, not accurate. Not accurate. In our darkest hour as a people, 
we slaughter most of the gargoyle race in an act of genocide. Um, not really. The gargoyles showed up, took over all the shrines of virtue, and uh, honestly, they did a pretty good job of slaughtering the Britannians. <laughs> if anybody got too close, they, uh, they let them have it. So this is not really how it went. That, this paints a pretty nasty picture. This is kind of revisionist history, I would say. It's not right. The Avatar uncovers the secret of the gargoyle prophecies and brings peace between our people. Yeah, the secret is that uh, the Avatar became the Avatar round over here. He stole the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom from the Gargoyles, and it uh, made their world collapse. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. As some in Britannia prosper, Batlin gathers the discontented masses for the Guardian. He... Nobody knew it was for the Guardian. Maybe a few insiders, but... Batlin put together the Fellowship, and everybody went, Oh, this is nice. They just lapped it up. Thought I was great. It was going to be better for them than the Virtues because things weren't going so well, I guess. It had been like two... It was 200 years between Ultima 6 and 7. So a lot had an opportunity to happen. But yeah, he wasn't gathering... Fo okay, he was gather gathering followers for the Guardians, just nobody knew that. So, okay, we'll let it slide. The Avatar stops the Guardian from entering Britannia by destroying the Black Gate. That is wrong, wrong, wrong wrong. Uh, he didn't slice it with a sword. That doesn't even work. Blackrock is physically impenetrable. That's nonsense. This could never happen. <laughs> uh, the Avatar blasted the Black Gate with Rudyam's wand, which had the, uh, you know, we read about this earlier, the interesting effect of making Blackrock explode. <laughs> That's what happened. So this is this is nonsense. That didn't happen. Boo. Boo, sir. Dupre is lost as he sacrifices himself to save our world from the Guardian's grip. Yeah, that's not entirely accurate because though, yes, the Guardian did give Batlin orders to go to Serpent Isle. After that, his involvement pretty much ended. Uh, Ultima 7 Part 2 was about Batlin and... Batlin's choices. He, he was trying to stop working for the Guardian. Uh, he collected the three Banes of Chaos, which were pieces of the Chaos Serpent who had been destroyed as a result of the War of Imbalance, which was kicked off because of uh, Exodus pulling the Great Earth Serpent out of the Ethereal Void, which caused the Order Serpent and Chaos Serpent to start going at it, and their, their forces started killing each other, and uh, Order 1 actually, which is why the Chaos Serpent was torn apart. Uh, to fuse the Chaos Serpent back together again, a uh, soul was required, and uh, the Avatar drew the short straw and was going to sacrifice himself, but Dupre felt so guilty about what he did while he was possessed by one of the Banes and became the Bane of Wantonness himself. He killed everybody in the town of Monitor, so... Uh, he pushed the Avatar out of the way and sacrificed himself. The Avatar is taken to the world of Pagan, a land perverted by the Guardian. We don't know where the Tapestry of Ages came from. We don't know who made it. But uh, I do have to wonder how they have all this knowledge about the Avatar's recent adventures in Pagan. Because uh, he just arrived in Britannia from Pagan, except for that little thing on Earth. But still, how is this here? How do they know? And that particular image looks more like the end cinematic of Ultima 7 Part 2, where the Avatar is floating around in the ethereal void and has just reunited the three serpents, and he's feeling pretty good about himself, and then the Guardian's malevolent red hand comes out of nowhere and grabs him and shakes him off into the waters of Pagan. But what do I know? The Avatar faces a land and people who cannot be converted to the ways of virtue. Yeah, but in all fairness, he didn't even try. There was no... I mean, why, why, uh, all he wanted to do was leave. <laughs> um, 
And this is also not how this event went. There wasn't just some guy getting his head chopped off over a bucket. Uh, Because it's a very memorable scene. So this is, again, why would you... The Avatar shows up in Pagan, and this is happening at docks. Uh, A guy's head gets chopped off, and it falls into the water. And that's actually very important, because that means that his soul is uh, being handed over to Hydros, the Lurker, the Titan of Water, instead of Lithos, the Mountain King, the Titan of Earth, which is what people are supposed to do in Pagan. They're supposed to give the dead over to Lithos. So it was kind of a big deal uh, to have that head drop in the water. So this is not only wrong, but it hurts to see. It's, It's really wrong. In order to escape, the Avatar uses the powers of darkness, summoning Pyrus, the Titan of Fire. Yeah, uh, he did. Um, I don't know that it's really that important in the great scheme of things, but uh, honestly, I think that Origin and or EA just thought Pyros was the, the coolest dang thing ever and really wanted to, uh, you know, kind of play it up a little bit. Maybe we'll uh, see Pyros again. Who knows? Because that would make sense, wouldn't it? Right? Titan of Fire in uh, Pagan? That would make a lot of sense to see him again somehow. The Avatar will return after the Guardian has appeared in Britannia. Okay, so now we're in the Ultima 9 zone of the tapestry. We're in, we're in an area of prophecy. And it is very clearly stating that the Guardian is causing more mischief. And the Avatar is going to come take care of it. Loud and clear. Uh, except people don't seem to know that the Guardian is the trouble here. Lord Burris is just like, I don't know what's going Lord Burris, have you, have you seen the tapestry of ages? Have you ventured outside your castle to go see this thing? Because, or have any of your, maybe your Seneschal could tell you, or any visitor that comes to see you while you're sitting there moping? I mean, like, hey, man, you know, I, I saw this tapestry of ages and, uh... You know it's the Guardian, right? The Guardian's doing all this? In fact, there's a column right there. Let's hear about it. The Guardian will rip Britannia asunder with giant evil columns. Yeah, so... There is no excuse for anybody to... I mean, even even Alina over here is just like, I don't know what those columns are. They just sprang up 20 years ago. Do you think that the bad things might have something to do with that? They might. Yeah, they might. You want to go check check your exhibit real quick, the one that answers that for you? Very clear connection between the Guardian and the columns and the evil that they are, you know, farting out around them. But okay. All right. Whatever, guys. The Avatar will ascend beyond mortality, never to return to Britannia again. We we kind of got hints that that might be what's coming, uh, back back on Earth. <laughs> um, but there it is in the uh, the prophecy area. So uh, all right, I guess we'll just have to take that for what it is. If I were the... Yeah, he's thinking about it right now. He's like, I don't know about this. Uh, uh, uh. Is it too late to build myself a, a black gate and head back to Earth because this... I don't know about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in the next video, we will explore some of these other exhibits. Uh, yeah, we'll have fun with those too. Pick them apart as well. Sorry for the jump there. I realized that something I would like to do after going through the Tapestry of Ages like that is check out this section of the journal that uh, we saw earlier but didn't really kind of, we just skipped over it. Uh, here's, here's another telling of everything that we just read about. So let's, let's, let's just do this real quick to have it all together. The First Age of Darkness. The tale began as a traveler from another world destroyed the gem of immortality and foiled the plan of the evil wizard Mundane to rule Cesaria. 
That's Ultima 1. Ultima 2, The Revenge of the Enchantress. The Traveler returned to drive back the hordes of evil summoned by Mundane's lover and disciple, the Enchantress Minax, who had sworn revenge for her lost love. Exodus. Exodus, bastard child of the evil mages Mundane and Minax, brought Cesaria to the brink of anarchy before the Traveler arrived and banished the last of this family line to the pit. What? To the pit? Where's that? Like, the Stygian Abyss? I don't know what that's referring to, actually. It's just... Maybe just sounded cool. I don't know. Quest of the Avatar. Lord British united Sosaria under the new name Britannia and proclaimed the eight sacred virtues as the essence of Britannian life. The Traveler returned and was named Avatar of the Virtues, Defender of the People, and Britannia's Champion. Warriors of Destiny. From the three largest shards of the broken gem of immortality came the Shadow Lords, who influenced Lord British's trusted confidant, Lord Blackthorn. The Avatar summoned eight companions to defeat the Shadow Lords and rescue their king, while Blackthorn was thrown into the ethereal void for his betrayal. That is pretty rough, honestly, but he didn't mean to. The False Prophet. The Gargoyle's most sacred book, the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom, foretold that a false prophet would destroy the Gargoyle race unless he was sacrificed. After learning that he was the false prophet, the Avatar undertook a quest to bring peace between the races. The Black Gate. The Guardian, a vile beast from another world, was forced from Britannia when the Avatar traveled through the portal and destroyed the Black Gate through which the Guardian had entered. Uh... Wait. What? Forced from Britannia, he didn't really get... I mean, he started to try to come through the gate. The Avatar traveled through the portal and destroyed the... Uh... I... Sorry, that's just very poorly written and confusing. Am I the only one? Well, we know what happened. I mean, moving on. But they, they totally just skipped Serpent Isle. Totally skipped it. It's not here. Serpent Isle did not happen. All right. Pagan. Imprisoned on a distant world within the sphere of the Guardian, the Avatar was forced to summon the powers of darkness to thwart the elemental titans and open a portal to return to his world of peace. Mmm... Yeah, but he didn't mean to... He didn't go to Earth. I mean, he did. That's what we saw, but... Okay. Ascension. The Avatar, champion of virtue, is called upon one last time to defeat the Guardian, who has wrought new destruction through eight great columns that are slowly ripping through the land and twisting the minds of the people. For crying out loud, I, I could just show Lord British my magic journal here. Be like, yo, LB, this is what's going on. Now you know. But that's, that's not what happened. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Now we'll move on. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.